Hi, I'm Scott Rigby from Adobe, and today we're talking about the future of work. I'm joined here by Sarah Kane, who's an associate professor from the University of Technology, Sydney. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. So, Sarah, you work for an educational institution. How are educational institutions preparing graduates for the future of work? Look, I think educational institutions are grappling with the issue of technological change and what it means for work and what it means for how they prepare students, as with other organisations, so they're having to get their heads around this. I think educational institutions, particularly universities, are trying to think of the broader skill sets that are required of students and graduates. So less about we're going to teach you how to do a particular task yep. and more about how we're going to teach you to think. And I think that's a slow change and it's not across all programs universally, but it's certainly moving towards that. So sort of broad thinking, critical thinking as graduate attributes that we're looking to, to achieve. All right. You've talked about kind of this utopian vision of, of the future and with technology and how do we stay, stay grounded through that you kind of have this you know there's this romantic idea of the cyber future how do we continue to stay grounded through this kind of forward momentum look i think that's been a, a a serious concern of mine is that there's a tendency to be distracted by um, you know a sexy new app or, or a new technology or, or some kind of utopian vision of the future um, and I think the way that we stay grounded is to think about what does this mean for real people right now so we can talk about the future and of course we have to think about what's coming next but we also have to think about what's the lived experience of people and uh, make sure that that's not um, forgotten or glossed over in our sure. sort of pursuit of something fantastic in the future. You kind of talked about that, you know, um, pursuit of a, a particular idea. Adobe's just put out some research around the, the future of work and, and through that, particularly around the experience vertical was that younger workers are really looking for kind of that creative thinking and diversity in the workplace. Where do you think that's at from a reality perspective and are businesses really delivering on that? Look, I think um, younger workers have a different set of expectations than we've seen before. And, and, and you know, we saw it with, with Gen Y, with, you know, this sort of job jumping and, and we're seeing again a different version of that where there's an expectation of, I guess, self-fulfillment. So if I'm going to come to work, I want to see how I can use my talents to the best way, not, not being not a task imposed on me, but how I can contribute in the best way I see fit. And I think some organisations are better equipped than others. Despite all of the technological change that we've spoken about, most organisations are not at the cutting edge. Most organisations have not changed their systems, have not changed their structures in a way that fits what we imagine the future to look like. So I think there's going to be, for a while, there's going to be a bit of a mismatch between the expectations of younger workers mm -hmm. and what organisations are going to be able to offer them. Of course, you always have the outliers, you know, the, the employers that are at the cutting edge um, and that's to be commended and, and of course uh, um, many people want to go and work for them. But there is going to be a bit of disjuncture between the reality and the experience for young workers if they feel like they're going to be able to contribute in this way as soon as they start work. Sure. You, you kind of talked about, you know, technology as a distraction. Do you see technology as an enabler for the future workforce or do you see that we're moving kind of towards this distraction economy? I think it can go either way and I think what I've uh, advocated for is I guess a conscious adoption of technology not a, um, a passive acceptance of, of whatever comes next yeah. what uh, a questioning of what it means when we get a new piece of technology particularly at the workplace do we need this what does it do what 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 does it mean for workers how do they reskill um, so I think it can be a distraction both on an individual level and an organizational level. Mm -hmm. Does an organization actually need to engage in the highest level of technology or not? Um, so I think it, it, it has the potential to uh, create uh, better jobs because it can take away some of the monotony that you might have in, in some manual jobs or, or less skilled jobs. Uh, but it also has the potential, yes, to distract, I think. And, and, you know, you being quoted in the press around kind of your, your thoughts around the, the gig economy. Do you see the gig economy as, you know, driving a downward spiral for the middle class incomes? I think the gig economy, in at least in my mind, has become shorthand for, we were just talking about enablers and, and distractors. I think it's become shorthand for some of the worst characteristics of a future of work Sure. technology <laughs> uh, enabled future of work in that it disaggregates a job to right. tasks yeah. and um, then allows for those tasks to be um, bid down to the, to the lowest common denominator. Um, and so I think that the gig economy 
it presents a challenge to established ideas of what work means, mm -hmm. but also to establish ideas of what is fair at work, what we think is a fair pay, fair rate of pay for a fair day's work. Um, and so I think that's why the gig economy has come for me anyway, to be emblematic of the dangerous side of technology at work, because it's not about enabling, it's not about fulfillment in jobs, it's about lowest common denominator. Yeah, so somewhat of a segue into that is really that sort of uncertainty and flexibility around work, and how do you see that sort of panning out through the next couple of years? Well, the thing about flexibility in technology, flexibility is a good thing, and if you talk to gig workers, as I've done, Flexibility is the one thing that they really hold on to and they really love about the type of work. It's all of the other things that come with it that's the problem. And, and I guess the, the thing about um, flexibility is what we've seen to date is largely one-way flexibility. It's flexibility for organisations. Sure. It's flexibility for organisations to say, this task or this group of tasks is no longer our main focus. We'll hive that off and let some lesser workers deal with that and we'll keep our main workers where we need them. Um, so the flexibility has been one way. If there's genuine flexibility for a worker to choose their hours, to choose their terms, then that's a much more fulfilling model. Um, unfortunately, we haven't seen a lot of that except at the very high end of the labour market. And I guess that's the other point to make, that the gig economy, the freelance economy, the digitally enabled economy, the platform economy, whatever we want to call it, um, is experienced very differently depending on where you sit in the labour market. If I'm a skilled IT professional, I've got a very different experience than, you know, a bike courier delivering food to someone. Totally agree. Well, Sarah, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much.